Welcome, one and all, to a, a very exciting episode of Dimension 20 Live! I'm your humble Dungeon Master, Brennan Lee Mulligan. With me, as always, in spirit and uh, teleconferencingly, are our intrepid heroes. Say hi, intrepid heroes! Hi, hi intrepid, intrepid heroes! heroes. <laughs> Ooh, beautiful. Uh, uh, well, one and all, welcome back to this incredible finale for a uh, fantasy high sophomore year, the continuing adventure of the Bad Kids, teen heroes from the Eggford Adventuring Academy on their spring break mission to retrieve the crown of the Nightmare King. Uh, if you're wondering why we are now a series of heads in boxes uh, <laughs> rather than people sitting around a table, uh, you're probably watching this uh, way after the fact, uh, and thankfully have survived the global coronavirus pandemic, uh, because we are recording this uh, uh, due to uh, maintaining social distancing and quarantine. Uh, everyone, please do as much as you can. Wash your hands to prevent the spread of this virus and help take care of your fellow human beings. We're all, we all got it. We're all working together. Um, for all of you at home, uh, if you're watching this again, months or years after the fact, that's what's going on right now. Um, if you found this VHS tape in a heap of rubble, <laughs> as you uncovered the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Please piece together the mystery of why this webcast was downloaded onto a VHS tape. <laughs> Uh, me. It was me. I'll admit it now. <laughs> Emily did it. Uh, incredible. Uh, a little recap. Uh, uh, spring Break started with our uh, teen heroes, the bad kids, who successfully defeated their vice principal at the uh, prom at the end of freshman year, are now on their Spring Break sophomore year to retrieve the crown of the Nightmare King. They've gone to the pirate city of Leviathan. They've gone to the elven homeland of Falinel, to the gnomish and wood elf conclave of Arborley, and deep into the heart of the Nightmare Forest to retrieve the crown of the Nightmare King. They've discovered the four transubstantiations. They have followed the Abernant family, Adine's family, deep into the forest. They have uh, saved each other, made new friends and allies, and now they have faced their greatest fears. Five of our intrepid heroes made it all the way to the heart of the Nightmare King's forest, facing the unknown and all of the dread that these dark woods could put upon them. However, one, we still presume to be dead. How dead remains to be seen as we conclude the story of Fantasy High sophomore year! Woo! Ooh. Um, it does sound real cool, dude. We sounded cool as hell in that so description. Cool? So freaking mm. cool. So freaking cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um this is the most work I've done in months, it feels like. Ian called me separately and asked I that have... I just play dead for five hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, last we left Kristen, you were in the chapel of the unnamed goddess. After having rolled a nat 20 religion check, you communed with a voice from beyond. The voice was filled with cold, icy bitterness and rage. And as you spoke, saying, I have praise to offer you, the voice responded, what praise will you have in death? You watched as the horn of a skeletal unicorn burst through your rib cage, covered in blood, and you collapsed to the ground. Dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is going through Kristen Appleby's mind in her final moments? Okay. So I'm definitely thinking that felt, I don't know what was giving me this impression, but I do feel like that was a success or, <laughs> you know, maybe even a critical role, you know? Um, <laughs> I don't know what where these words are coming from, but it does seem like maybe what was supposed to happen was good. Um, but instead I have been stabbed by a an old dead horse. <laughs> so um uh pain, betrayal, anger. In your moment of feeling pain, anger, and betrayal, you have a vision of a woman taller than a mountain standing in the midst of a forest. The trees only reach her ankles. 
as she stands astride the world, surrounded by a thunderstorm like none you have ever seen in your mortal life. Lightning strikes her over and over again as she screams and rends her face with her fingernails. Each time the lightning strikes, her flesh vanishes and you see a tormented skeleton within her as she is being killed by the lightning storm around her. You feel pain, anger, and betrayal. You have been destroyed and you feel that you are communing directly with the moment of pain, anger, and betrayal 850 years prior. You don't think you failed. The feeling you're feeling completely attaches you and gives you profound insight. The vision of this screaming giantess deity flickers in front of your mind and you feel the betrayal and pain of someone or something that was trying to warn people that this is what would happen and they didn't listen. You have your vision uh, you're waiting for death to come. You're not losing consciousness. Uh, you're lying on the floor of the chapel. Uh, but you're not, you're not sure. You, you feel blood soaking all through your shirt, your shorts, pooling around you on the ground. Uh, what does Kristen do? Uh, can I make a perception check to see if yeah, I make, died or? Yeah, make a perception check. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, let's see. 19. Uh, you don't feel dead. You're Who's around me? Can I see? Or is everyone still there? Uh, having come back from the vision, the room is filled with dust. You are. <clears throat> you don't feel pain in your chest anymore um as you move a finger to like investigate uh the tips of your fingers touch a wet bloody hole in your chest do you go deeper to try to feel into the wound um um oh. <laughs> i can i cast light on one hand and then like investigate myself yeah absolutely Okay. You cast light and like use your like the screen of your crystal to like kind of look in. Um, <laughs> you see a huge hole. You, it, you can't really see through to the other side because your like organs and musculature have like closed <laughs> up on the hole. But you can you can like push through and your heart is destroyed. It is it is torn up. Um, and as you are there, you realize you haven't. Uh, you, I think you like probably like gasp a little bit or there's something to take a breath and you realize that you had not up until that point been breathing. I'm dead. I'm dead. Uh, can um, I cast a detect good and evil on myself? <laughs> uh, you detect nothing. Uh, uh, you don't detect any good or evil anywhere. As you cast a spell, by the way, uh, your... Uh, the the pinky finger of your right hand, something has like bitten the end of your finger off. There's like a, uh, uh, your your finger is like injured. It's just like, it's bleeding too. You also see that like the blood is not pumping out of you anymore because your heart is no longer beating, but you are like dripping. You're, you're kind of warm still. You don't feel, you don't feel undead. There's no like, <clears throat> I can no longer taste the air. I can no, you just are neither living nor dead. Okay. My <laughs> Catholic dad was right about purgatory. It's <laughs> <laughs> just kind of chilling. Um, I guess I try to get up and see if I can walk with no blood. <laughs> 
Um, you get up, it, it knocks some more blood loose out of your body, but y- you don't seem to need it. You can still move. Uh, you, I, yeah. Can I look out the window and see what it looks like outside? No window in the chapel. And in fact, the door is sealed up, but you see that there is a huge, like, cleaved hole in the wall like some huge object smashed a hole in the wall near part of the chapel can i check my crystal and see what date it is uh oh it's like it's it's been probably like an hour or 90 minutes since you and the rest of the bad kids walked into the temple um okay i cast uh, a, a cure wounds on myself. Awesome. <clears throat> um, you cast cure wounds on yourself. Uh, you knit your body back together so at least your um, blood stops falling out in a really uncomfortable, disquieting way. So now you have these like two pale scars, one on your chest and another one on your back. Uh, oh, whoa. Uh, yeah, you feel like knit over, but it's it's extre- it's like translucent pale because the blood isn't flowing to it, so it's like kind of room temperature dead skin. But it's it's keeping the holes, uh, and you heal over. The, uh, uh, but it looks like you've had an amputation on like the last knuckle of your pinky finger. Like that just heals over, oh. but you don't have the bone for it. <laughs> You like Wolverine now? No, I took yeah, one of yeah. your finger bones yeah. just to so oh. we can um, reincarnate. Yeah. Okay, I guess I try to see if I can get out of here. Awesome. Uh, do you walk back the way you guys came in or further in? Further in. You walk. I still through- have a glowing hand, <laughs> and I'm uh, doing this. Uh. Light moves forward. You walk through the rest of the temple. You see some signs of like a dusk moss ritual. How is Kristen feeling about her friends that have like left her here? Have they left? I can't really tell. Like, it just seems like, are there any footprints I can look for to see like where they went? Make a survival check. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Oh yeah, baby, that's a 23. Your friend's tracks lead out of here. Um, the way they came in? Uh, uh, no, deeper into the forest. First, Riz, uh, Adines do not lead out. Gorgugs do, Figs also lead out. You, uh, uh, at, the, at this moment, cannot remember Fabian. He is like washed from your mind at this point. Who? Fabian is gone. You can't like, you cannot literally can't recall. Uh, who is Fabian? <laughs> um, okay. Okay. I, fuck. It, can I do something to try to like commune with Tracker? Is there any way of like? Hell yeah. Go ahead with that high survival. Um, You find a weird dark looking oracular pool right before the end of the temple. Um, Go ahead and make a religion check. Since Kristen did, uh, did look for our footprints, might she notice the um, figs boots going to it? Uh, Yes. You would notice figs boots going to this pool. I got a 24 on that religion. Your hand glows and another source of light comes out. The thin layer of skin over your heart is shedding a little bit of golden light as though something radiant were buried inside your chest. And you see the pool shimmer, ripple, and then go completely still. You see the sun reflected in this pool deep within the bowels of the temple. Is this a Helioic temple? Not at all. This was a temple from the tribes of Silver to the unnamed goddess. 
but you see the sun reflected in it now. Okay, so, okay. And as you dwell on Tracker, a crescent moon sails across the reflection of the water as though this were reflecting a sky, even though it is deep within the temple. Okay. Cool. Uh, um. <clears throat> you feel the light extend from your hand towards the pool uh, and feel a beckoning from the pool and this is a strange forest. You don't know that the beckoning is safe, but you have some inclination that there, if there is not safety in this pool, there are at least answers in this pool. Okay, I go into the pool. <laughs> you go into the pool. What is Kristen thinking and feeling as she goes into the pool? I think she, I, I'm I'm seeing this moon, so I'm wondering if maybe it will connect me somehow with Tracker, or I know I saw Fig's footprints, so I'm wondering if she's around. Can I feel in the pool to see if Fig is, you know, at the bottom or something like that, or? Yeah, you can absolutely do that. I drag the pool. <laughs> um, uh, you begin to drag the pool. As you go deeper, you begin to, You move deeper in, and suddenly the sun glows bright. The moon glows bright. You get to the bottom of the pool, and as you're digging around and dredging up to try to find Fig somewhere, um, you pull through and come up for air, and you are in this lake in the middle of like a misty pine forest. You see that there is a field with some like horses running through it. Uh, give me another religion check. 17. You are in the outer plains. You are not in the nightmare forest anymore. Uh, you, the pool, you've, you have communed also you have moved through life and death. The outer planes are afterlives. They are where souls go after they die. Oh, okay. In your, you have literally died before, but you feel very vulnerable right now. What you are in this state is almost something neither alive nor dead. It's almost as if your soul, which is supposed to be this eternal thing, has been given a physical, tangible body. So something that is supposed to be invincible and immortal is now clothed in flesh. Like you yourself are transubstantiated. You are not any longer a being made of matter and spirit. You are one and the same. They are knitted together. Um, as you are in the lake, you see from a high clearing up through the forest, and again, there's mist all around. You hear like sweet bird song and a rustling of pine needles and leaves on the wind. And you see a meadow as the quality of light in the sky dims to dusk, there is a meadow filled with radiant gold and silver light. And you hear a voice speak, resonating from the center of your chest, going, Kristen, it's okay. You can come home. <laughs> is that my, wait, it, Who's that? It's not your dad, but man, did you feel like it was your dad for a second. Didn't sound like your dad, but when he spoke, it felt like dad. Was it Jabba? Uh, only one way to find out. You have to go to the clearing. Okay, I run to the clearing. You, you run through. In the clearing are two thrones. There is a golden throne. 
with geometric patterns and lines and rays moving out from it. And you see a long, white-haired, bearded, robed old man whose eyes radiate the warmth and ferocity of the sun. He is powerful and ancient and wise, and there is a sternness to him and a comfort to him, as though he will provide for you if you leave his authority unquestioned forever. And seated next to him in a chair of silver birch uh, with interlocking vines and leaves and twigs of like wicker and plant life, all silvery white, is a beautiful elven woman in a gown of deep blue flecked with silver, a huge medallion of the moon around her neck. You see that you are beholding Sol, god of the sun, and Galakea, goddess of the moon, uh, standing off to Sol's side, kind of like dejected and looking down. Yeah, that's with, right. Uh, with <laughs> sheaves, of, with, with like a corn husk sheaf all around his belt, a Harvest Camp t-shirt, and a backwards upside down visor uh, is Helio. Yeah. He stands What's off up, his, man? <laughs> Helio looks up at you and says, Kristen, uh, it's, it's, I'm so glad to see you again. Um, my dad wanted to holler at you real quick, and um, <laughs> so did so did Galakea. <laughs> you realize, by the way, that uh, you are in the plane of uh, Elysium right now. You're in like the neutral good plane. Soul is lawful good, and uh, Galakea is like chaotic good. So they're clearly in this like neutral meeting space to speak with you. Cool. Um. Uh, you see uh, Sol, the sun god, looks right at you and goes, Well there, Kristen, it's, uh, it's good to see you again. One of my own sons chosen. Uh, last time you saw me, I was, uh, a bit, uh, predisposed. I was, uh, unconscious on the floor of my office because your principal knocked me unconscious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not a, not a huge fan of that. I have to say. Yeah. That's, it sounds like God can create someone so strong. They can knock God out. <laughs> uh, soul does not laugh at all. Uh, Galakea looks at you and says, Daughter of Helio, it is a pleasure and an honor to make your acquaintance. It's great to meet you too. I am Galakea, goddess of the moon. You have journeyed long, and you have finally arrived here in the lands beyond. I have spoken to my brother, Sol, god of the sun. You, at the moment of your birth, were chosen by Helio, divined from the beginning to be a prophet of his astride the world. I mean, isn't that kind of geographic? Like, didn't Helio just say like, hey, everyone here, you're Helio now. Uh, you see that, uh, uh, Galakea- kind of feels like yeah. nations and religion just kind of all become one. It's not really like I was handpicked. It was probably just like, hey, Solace, Helio. Uh, <laughs> you, you look and see, uh, Galakea and Sol exchange a kind of look. Uh, you see, Sol says, uh, Helio, why don't you, uh, take young Kristen for a walk and explain everything. Um, 
Helio not can anybody else do it? <laughs> uh, Helio, can Galakea do it, please? I'd love to hear from you. Uh, Galakea nods and stands and says, I shall walk. I appreciate with... it so much. I'm sorry I'm acting like a total fuck. Um, <laughs> Things uh, you say when you meet God. <laughs> um, uh, you see Galakea walks with you, and she... Uh, uh, reaches out a hand to take your hand. She's about like nine feet tall in her present form, so she's sort of like towering over you. Mm. She walks with you and says... Kristen Applebee's. How has fared your journey to this realm? I am a little bit scared. I think I I think I probably died. And and I'm also wondering if is there any way that you can talk to Tracker? She worships you. She's she's um a werewolf. Uh, she looks like this. I pull up a kind of not okay photo of Tracker, like kind of naked, but it's just the most recent one I have. You see, you see, uh, uh, give me an insight check. Okay. Hey, 21. You say the word werewolf and you see a little flash of yellow go across Galakea's eyes. And you see that she swallows for a moment as though mentioning Tracker and that she was a werewolf. You see something, she is a goddess, but there's, there is a moment of like conflict within her. She gulps, returns to this like serene elven state and says, huh, yes, Tracker one of my few remaining wolf children. She, uh, yes, she has been one of my devoted servants. Uh, well, Tracker is why we are here to speak with you, Kristen. Is Tracker dead? No, but she is in grave peril. Okay, yeah. Uh, she looks at you and says, Have you ever questioned where your spells came from in the time that you have questioned your faith? I, I was kind of starting to think that maybe they were coming from the power of doubt. Um, doubt but- is nothing. Yeah, doubt killed me, I think, or <laughs> some sort of unicorn. I don't know if this is just like a, I don't know what killed me, but yeah, doubt is nothing. Doubt is the lack of s- something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly just so confused. I'm not asking the right questions and I'm aware of that. He looks at you and smiles and says, Kristen Applebee's. There is nothing to be gained from asking questions. The strength of a priestess flows from her conviction in the great divinity of the moon, ever-changing yet eternal. When one surrenders doubt and all questions and accepts the presence of the great divine, one's conviction is as resolute and eternal as the moon itself. The moon goes away for like half the day. Right? The moon. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> um, you see, she says, Sorry, not to poke holes in you, but I'm I'm kind of like on a on a roll with this question asking. It kind of sounds like you're offering me another version of what I'm coming from, you know? All, no doubt. Uh, you see her for a, for just a moment on that 21 insight, her lip curls into a little sneer and you could swear for a moment there was like a fang in her mouth. She goes, I understand. 
my child. All habits die hard. What I wish to raise to you is a simple point. Your ability to heal, your devotion to the power of life and its presence in the world never wavered. I want to show you what has been transpiring in all this time. She has walked you in a circle back to the clearing. You see all of your philosophers and the philosophy <laughs> students and grad students uh, all kind of waiting beyond the edge of the clearing. And you see Helio talking to them. Uh, she puts a, a big, powerful hand and kind of grips your shoulder tightly. And she says, You were chosen by Helio, and Helio was loath to let go of you. All young clerics go through phases, and that's what this was. Soul advised his son to allow these spirits to advise you for a time, but for a time only. Your spells, your healing magic, your devotion to life has been coming from the same place it always was, from poor gentle Helio, she points. And you feel the resonance of the fact that like, even as you abandoned Helio and changed your faith and your conviction, you still like had the blessed healer ability. You still had all of these attachments to who and what you were. And she looks at you and says, Kristen, no one blames you for stepping out of your home and going out into the front yard to run away because you never truly closed the door behind you. You can always come home. And what Soul and I have discussed is if you will not return to Soul or his son Helio, then you could be mine and you would still have all of your spells and you would never have to go even a single moment without being chosen by a power greater than yourself. Doesn't that sound preferable? I mean, honestly, it kind of just sounds like the hot top like in the mall sometimes the hot topic would be next to the not of this world and they're kind of the same store <laughs> so it kind of feels like <laughs> like you're just giving me like some more t-shirts lady talking to god talking to god right now <laughs> you're just giving me more t-shirts lady Again, Spence's <laughs> gifts around the corner i mean uh, i never uh, heard so... a more powerful metaphor in all my life <laughs> I just, I, I, I think it's very kind and, and I, I, I would like to be more like, what are you, what are you like? What is your, what would following you look like for me? What would change or, um, not that it's all about me. I'm just, I am looking for a more ultimate truth and not a stay safe, stay at home. Don't ever question life. You see, she looks and says, my path is a path of both serenity and passion, of the embrace of the natural world, the changing of the phases of the moon, the changing of the tides. It is a faith rooted in the, de the divine of the natural world, of the feminine of your sisters throughout the priestesshood. It is a faith shaped and molded by understanding that you will ever be clutched to my heart. And you recall conversations you've had with Tracker about having this primal faith and her conviction in that. Make a religion check for me if you'd be so kind. Uh, 16. 
something's going on with Galakea. Yeah. This isn't Tracker's goddess. You know what I mean? It's like there's just something that's not, the Tracker wouldn't worship this person. Um, yeah. Uh, she looks at you and says, what? Uh, there are churches and cathedrals all across the lands of Falinel and beyond devoted to my worship. Surely Tracker has explained some of my divine potency to you. Yeah, definitely. I, I've heard a lot from her. You know, speaking of Tracker, can you... As her god, can you show me where she is right now? Is there a way for us to scry on her together and... She is within the Nightmare King's forest. Mm -hmm. I cannot see there myself, but if I had a champion to send there, I would gladly do so, Kristen Applebee's. Mm -hmm. You see, she says, you see, my dear sweet, at times confused and a little befuddled darling baby sister, was once the queen of Silver. The Nightmare King killed my sister, and I would see him destroyed for daring to touch my family. Whoa. Yeah. So, is your sister, who is she? What's her name? Sadly, her name was destroyed. She was a goddess of mystery, and she believed ultimately that destroying her name would make her more mysterious and make her more suited to her own portfolio, her divine domain. But the Nightmare King killed her before she could complete this task. Wow. Uh, give me another insight check. Yeah. Hang on. Hey. Uh, insights. Oh, that's a uh, 15. That's not the story you heard. The story, you read all those documents of the Church of Galakea convincing the tribes of the forest to about the Silverian heresy and convincing the worshipers of the unnamed goddess to destroy their goddess's name. Yeah, okay, yes. You know what, Galakea? I would love to work for you. Uh, what would you like me to do? Go back in there and and do and would you give me like powers or something? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, you Dark see, gun? yeah. Um, <laughs> I would love to buy one of your shirts. <laughs> uh, you King see, King Kong is not my grandpa. <laughs> uh, uh. You see uh, that she says, uh, all you have to do is swear yourself to me from the foundations of your soul, become one of my chosen, and you will be able to wield my power. Can I do something crazy? Yes, please do. <laughs> please so do. we're in this kind of neutral place. Yeah. Can I turn away a little bit and maybe like offer a prayer to this questioning God, this this other option potentially if it exists still, if it's still alive? Yeah, go ahead. Give me another religion check. Okay. Uh, okay, that's a 19. You turn, you reach out, you see that woman that was dying and rending her face, you reach out to her with your heart. The golden light disappears from your chest and is replaced with a cool and reassuring shadow. And 
you see in this vision, she turns to you. She was killed in an act of betrayal. She killed you in an act of betrayal. And as you reach out to understand her again, you see a look of shock on her face that you are still attempting to understand her. And you see that she weeps. And even in the midst of being destroyed, softly raises a hand towards you and just mouths amidst the thunder and lightning. I'm sorry. I'm just so scared. And before she can finish saying scared, you feel a vice-like grip on your shoulder. Galakea whips you around and has like pierced your shoulder with her hand. And she says, there is nothing there to see. Ah! And this wolf's head, and she, <sighs> I'm so sorry. What an ugly thing for you to see. I, and you see, she composes herself. You see a self-loathing in this goddess of the moon. The wolf part of her, the, the part that Tracker loves, this goddess hates, the moon goddess hates it about herself. And you realize why. In this moment, Kristen Applebee's beyond the pale of death, once again, having performed this shamanic task to go to realms beyond to understand a fundamental truth of the world. Gods are not eternal. They are shaped by their followers. Galakea is this way because the elves of Falinel made her this way. And who she once was when she was a goddess with primal cairns and moss-covered stones, the version of her that Tracker worships, is in there. But in the mortal world, she is spoken for first and foremost by the high elves of Falinel. And their interpretation of her has become her because as the void said to you at the end of freshman year, as above, so below. And if this is the version of Galakea that is most worshiped, it is the version of her that will be real. She has lied to you. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, you, uh... Yeah, I think I... Man, what do I do? Um... I would like to, um, fuck, I mean, can I, can I do like a perception check to see like what I could possibly do? Can I just say I reject your offer to everybody? I wholeheartedly reject all offers that you've given me. And then I run up to Helio and I punch him in the fucking face. <laughs> Yes! Damn, oh. dude. Decking gods right now. <laughs> no. I'm decking a god's son. <laughs> oh, fair, fair. Uh, you say oh, I funny. reject your offer to both. Galakea and Soul look on, and you see that, like, for all of their, like, branding that they are the opposites of each other, they are so fundamentally the same. Yeah. It is... It's a, it's an aesthetic, it's a mood, it's a vibe. But it's like Dove Soap and Axe Body Spray are owned by the same core company <laughs> called Unilever, wow, and it's all just advertising so and yeah. yeah. Another Kristen amazing analogy. <laughs> uh, guarantee, hey, D20 stats, when you're watching this, I need brand references on stream by <laughs> Allie Beardsley. That's all I need. <laughs> Anachronistic um, facts by Allie during. <laughs> Um, you sock Helio in the jaw, um, and you turn to run, um, as you turn to run, uh, you see Soul goes and bellows out and becomes enormous, the sun's own fire, and says, 
I told you that kid was trash, now get her! Uh, and <laughs> you see all of the philosophers, all of the students look up from their kind of sadness, this fact that they were kind of just like, almost like paid friends, that they were just here, even though you were still getting your spells from this divinity, that, that Soul and Healy just let them. And you see that they all look at each other and mob Helio and Soul, and a couple of them run, whisk, you see two of the philosophers whisk you in this toga with a little thing of like olive leaves around you and go, <laughs> quickly, through the forest! And these like old sandaled Grecian philosophers just start running you through the woods as fast as they can. Um, you see the gods completely like destroying these spirits. Soul bellows out after you and says, you are done! You are cut off! No more magic, no more spells! See how you like working zero miracles from now on! <laughs> you're just regular! Uh, and You're you, one of many gods! <laughs> uh, you you uh, rush away. Uh, you see Helio Pathet is just getting owned by these grad students, and that's a statement. And he, uh, <laughs> you see that he, he goes, he goes, Christian, you just, you're, you're a soul in, in a body. You're one and the same. All that's waiting for you without any help from a god is just oblivion. And you know, he's right. If you die in this form, there is no going to an afterlife. It's just, you're gone. Um, you arrive back at the lake. You hear the noise of these gods rage off in the distance. A couple of the other students have run up. They get you to the lake. They look at you partially like injured and wounded, these sort of like ghostly philosophy people. Um, they get you to the lake, put you down. Um, you see that one of the philosophers, there's this bespectacled kind of like enlightenment era looking woman with like a little pillbox hat. Um, you see, she looks up at you very academically, professorial. Um, she says, Christian, we're very sorry that we didn't tell you, but we, we were on your side all along, even though we couldn't tell you the truth of where your spells were coming from. Um, you see this old bearded philosopher steps forward and says, Before, you said very wise words, which were that doubt cannot be a belief, but it should be a practice. Um, the philosophy spirits put their hands on your staff, hold it, and your shepherd's crook staff goes from being this like old helioic wooden like shepherd staff and it changes shape just slightly as it turns silvery and cool and pleasing to the touch with a shimmer of starlight within it. And that shepherd's crook so easily becomes an elongated, elegant question mark. And you see <laughs> that uh, they hand you the <laughs> staff of doubt. Um, you see, uh, the philosophers all put their hands on your shoulders and back. Uh, the woman in spectacles gives you a kiss on the side of the head and says, if doubt is a practice and not a belief, then it should live in your hands, if not your heart. And you hold the staff of doubt, uh, taking it with you as a tool and no longer as something that you have to feel in every moment of your waking life. Uh, um, they say their goodbyes to you. Uh, where does Kristen, uh, you hear the shouts of the gods off in the distance. Uh, what does Kristen do at this moment? Okay, uh, I'm back at the pool. Yes, you are. I guess I keep going forward so that I can get out of this room. Cool. Yeah, you dive back to the pool and you come back. Uh, I am going to go ahead actually and uh, uh, if you look on your character sheet online, I am going to give you the Staff of Doubt right now and tell you what it does. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, magic um, items, magic items. items. Magic items, magic items. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Just a 
total Everybody's getting mad. Right <laughs> okay, <laughs> hold on one second. Okay, we're good. Cool. Um, it is now in your character sheet online, and uh, I'll tell you what it does. Um, Kristen, you feel yourself lose all of your spells. You don't have any innate spell. You're not a cleric of a deity anymore. Um, uh, <laughs> but you have a really cool stick, so. <laughs> you have yeah, it. Cool. Uh, <laughs> For the first time, you're you're on your own. You got nobody in your corner, um, and you feel the metaphor of what they were talking about. The door is closed behind you. There is no going back. Um, the staff of doubt has ten charges. While holding it, you can use an action to expend one or more charges to cast some of the following spells from it. They have different costs associated. Detect magic is one charge. Lesser Restoration is two charges. Dispel Magic is three charges. Nice. Banishment is four charges. Greater right. Restoration is five charges. Um, cool. While you are wielding it, you have advantage on saving throws against being charmed or frightened. So cool. the, the whole point of it is about like clearing away like blindness, possession, dispelling spells. It, it, it can't do those things of, it does exactly what doubt is supposed to do. It's not in your heart anymore. It can't heal your friends, but it can get rid of some bullshit. And that's what doubt is supposed to do. Okay. Um, so you can't revivify anymore? Cannot revivify anymore. Wow. You can do greater restoration. You can do greater restoration. Um, chill, chill. Very cool. chill. Cool. Um, uh, awesome. Uh, Kristen, you're back in the temple. Uh, uh, where do you go from here? Okay, so I... I don't have any spells at all. It's not like I'm in a, my new, um... No. No, no. You, you're, you, right now, you got nothing. Because you, you reached out to that unnamed goddess and felt her be moved by the fact that you were reaching out to her again, but... You, you, your, your like life cleric stuff has been revoked. She just had too much on her plate to kind of give me some <laughs> spells or like what was up. It was a, it was bad lightning. <laughs> She's in the middle of some bad lightning. I said, I dare you to go back and beg for spells. Julio, <laughs> <laughs> please. Julio, um, you can punch me. Sorry. I'll never leave you again. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so, okay. Hmm, interesting. This is very <laughs> shocking. This is very shocking. Uh, okay, so I have a staff. Okay. I walk out. I walk I walk out of the chapel. Uh, hell yeah. Um, you are in the forest of the Nightmare King. Uh, Kristen knows that she has to move in the direction of her fears, but what does that mean in this moment for what Kristen is literally doing? Okay, I guess whatever direction, I'm gonna go in the direction I don't think I'll find Tracker in. Awesome. Uh, you go in the direction you do not think you will find Tracker in. Cool. You begin to head off into the forest. We are going to cut back to a cliffside over a sea of mist. Uh, a big hunk of rubble and boulders has been pushed off, sailing into the endless expanse of cliffside into mist. Gorgug and Fabian are at the edge of this cave, having come through these tunnels, looking out over expanses of, again, these, like, coastal, uh, uh, you know, like, Monument Valley, just those, like, towers of striated stone. These are not, like, red and orange. They're all, like, lichen-covered grays and deep, darker blues of stone, like, uh, and covered with pine forests on top, stretching out as far as the eye can see. You get about 200 feet of cliff up above you. Um, mm. 
Mm. You have both just come through hell. You've seen each other, share that big hug, and are now looking at this massive cliff scaling out overhead. You feel the dusk moss begin to like leave your your <sighs> bloodstream. Ooh. Never wow. doing drugs again. Never. Yeah. It's all done. Done. Um. <laughs> um do we uh do I uh, can we reach the closest cliff or are we like how far are we from it? Like well, you're standing, you realize that you're as you're looking around, you don't see like endless weirdly, you don't see like endless cliff going on the other side, you think you're in one of these spires. So your tunnel either uh, was like magic, you know what I mean? Like it just somehow- We're like in the middle of it somehow? Right, like you've appeared halfway, like halfway up one of these colossal towering spires mm -hmm. of stone uh, and are now like, you know, you know, if someone were flying by, they would look and see a little cave you know, like halfway in between the top and the mist ocean below and see you two peering out of this cave, <laughs> uh, kind of in the middle of the column. Okay, well, what do we know? Oh, well, we're here. Our friends are not here? Yes, okay. That's a solid start. Okay. Um, and we should find them? I agree with that. That's uh, that is. I think that's a great first step. Um, Maybe we should get to higher ground. I mean, do you want to? Do you want to climb? I mean, I'm down. I mean, if you want to climb, I'm down climb. to climb. I give yeah. a, cl a climb a shot. I've done uh, way crazier stuff today. So climbing, that's that honestly feels way more in my wheelhouse. Climbing is not quite a nightmare for me. Yes, but at the agreed. same time, this doesn't seem like an easy climb. No, not at all. Um, <sighs> can we do? A, can I do a perception check for like how difficult it would be? It feels like to scale, or like I don't know. Yeah. Is this like a like? Could we like boulder this, or is this straight up like like I don't know? Free solo levels of like <laughs> like like if we mess up and it's like done. Um, give me a perception check. I'm gonna. Can I do that too? Yeah, go for it. Uh, that'll be a seventeen. Uh, dirty 20. Okay. Uh, this looks, um, very scary, but doable. And, and doable doesn't mean, in other words, there is tremendous risk if you fuck up badly. However, it doesn't look impossible to get to the top. It's very naturally formed rock. Um, there are not many places it looks like to, um, directly up from you, there's not too many ledges where you could like get to be safe, rest for a moment. Um, however, if you look diagonally across, you see there are some other places that might be cave like, like the one you're in right oh. now. So. Mm. If you if you go slower and try to like edge sideways, you could get to some other places and maybe be a little bit less, sacrifice time to be a little bit less risky. Okay. Mm. Well, do we? Hmm. I wonder if there's any caves that go to different islands. Well, well that's what I'm. I'm wondering if how if there's a way. How would we find? Like, I don't. If our friends aren't coming here to this cave, would they be coming to one of those caves or? I, like, I, I don't know. I'm nervous about... Can I tell you something? I yeah. got smarter, but I still feel pretty dumb in this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fair, all right? I mean, I don't... I didn't... My levels of intelligence didn't change at all, but I mm -hmm. still feel just as unsure. Um, hey, why don't we tie a rope to each other and then climb for one of the closest caves? Or, great or, start. That's a solid start. Let's do it. I believe um, in you, Spring Break. I believe in you, Spring Break. Um... <laughs> Let's do. I use our my sheet. I like yeah. cinch it around Gorgon's waist. Uh, Ooh, thank you. <laughs> uh, incredible. Um, you use the sheet, and you guys are able, uh, in this moment, to give each other the help action, even while climbing. So each of you guys give me an athletics check with advantage. 
Uh, on belay. Belay uh, on. Uh, <laughs> wow. Thank goodness. I got a, I rolled a one and an 18. Uh, uh, so a 23 for me. Uh, uh, or athletics? Uh, oh. Athletics. 27. 27. Oh, okay, cool. I'm a 15. 15. Okay, cool. Um, uh, you guys begin to scale um, uh, to, to sort of get around as best you can. Uh, you make partial progress as you do so um you guys begin to uh uh i'm gonna say that you guys like uh uh begin to feel uh like uh, your hearts swell a little bit and in fact i'm actually <laughs> going to say hold on one second let me find okay you. i'm having a heart attack <laughs> having a heart attack no it's all right i think it's just a strong <laughs> emotional feeling <laughs> Um, into the mist. And, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Just dragging me with you. <laughs> uh, you guys begin to like get over across the rock face. You're making partial progress and you <laughs> feel on an intuitive level that you have changed. You watch Gorgug like point out the cave, start like figuring out the best path there. Gorgug, you feel like like Fabian calling out when your like grip is getting unsteady on something, moving along. You see that you have both like grown as you're moving through here. You also like feel that pulse of hope connect you. And there's this moment of like reflecting on Gorgug holding a tin flower out to Fabian on the first day of school, getting oh. socked in the stomach, and oh, then okay. like month, weeks and months of like owl bears and hoot growl, and that hug you guys shared in the cavern. And I think that like, especially for like teenage dudes that are growing up, there's this weird thing about like showing affection with your friends and being physical. And you guys spend a grueling two hours, like God. just like <laughs> being on top, like like arm under a shoulder up, grabbing someone's arm, pulling them up to the point where you're just with one working unit moving each other across the rock. Uh, and you uh, and you finally arrive at the, like begin to arrive at this cavern and you feel this like, friendship pulse oh. between you as you like because you know like all of the weirdness of like insecurity of friendship melts away with this like pure teamwork <laughs> of, like, <laughs> and you finally both uh vault yourself into um uh vault yourself into this cave uh as you vault yourself into the cave you see riddled with arrows is a massive griffin. Uh, you see... No! Ah! Uh, it. Uh, you see Baxter the griffin is in this cave. Um, I will ask both of you to make uh, a medicine check for me, if you'd be so kind. Um... Uh, I got a nine. 17? Um, Baxter is dying, uh, but not dead. Uh, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on Baxter. <laughs> uh, Gorgug, you rush up, take out a first aid kit, um, begin to go to work. You cast Cure Wounds. Uh, tell me how many hit points Baxter regains. Okay, so I, I don't actually have the card in front of me. Uh, uh, I can help you have it. It's 1d8 plus your modifier, your spell okay. modifier. I don't have any spells anymore, so you can have all my cards. <laughs> uh, three hit points. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so um, I rolled a one plus the two that my new bonus is, so. Um, you see Gorga go to work, still almost on death's door. Um, you both look up and see Baxter. Eyes flutter, covered in blood, just like breathing heavily. Baxter looks up and just has enough strength to kind of like nuzzle Gorgug with his beak. Um, you, Fabian, you look and see these arrows are, you recognize these arrows. Who are these arrows from? Um... Do, who do I recognize them 
Sandra Lynn. Oh. Oh, no. Um, I think it, it's tricked Sandra her. Lynn's been taken over in some way. Uh, oh, this is really bad. Um, can we... Hmm. Uh... Can I? I don't have any. I only have one other spell slot left. I should have cast Spare the Dying on him. I feel like. I mean, is there? Yeah. Is Baxter still dying, or has no. the cure wounds like stabilized? The cure, the cure wounds has worked fully. Um, uh, and Baxter gets up, shakes his wings. Uh, you see, the, the reason Baxter looks so unwell is it, uh, is like heartbreak. It's just like, he doesn't understand what's going on. He doesn't understand why he's he's been attacked. Um, he clearly was hit with like a last arrow in his throat that meant he had to rapidly descend and thankfully made it to this cave. Um, but you see, he stands up, he's, he's capable of movement again. Um, and and Gorgon, part of your first aid, I think is like you two pulling the arrows. Yeah, okay. I think um, we need to be careful. I feel like if Sandra Lynn would turn against Baxter, there's a chance that she may not be in a state to recognize us as allies. Either. Yeah. I wonder if we should just leave Baxter here to rest for a little bit, because I feel like if anything blew on him, he'd fall out of the sky again. That's fair. Yeah, in case Sandra Lynn is above. I mean, we did a pretty good job of climbing up this far. How many arrows are in here? <laughs> like, uh, does she have he took, more arrows? <laughs> uh, he he took about nine arrows. Oh, uh, geez. Hey, well, Baxter, we're going to fix Sandra Lynn. Yeah. Uh, she's, um, she, there's a lot going on here. I don't know how much you're getting of my explanation, but. Uh, give me an animal handling check. Okay. Pretty solid one to this. Plus a nat one, so. Uh, Baxter uh, uh, demands to follow you as you guys like. Oh no! Move to the, oh, out of the cave. Okay. Well, Baxter. I mean, um. Well. I. It's Baxter's choice. We're kind of we're kind of in the. Uh, this is sort of the end of the line, so we might as well just fuck it. Let's ride this. This buddy. Come on, Baxter. <laughs> yeah, I hop on. Let's do it. All right, Baxter. Uh, we're going to get your person back. Uh, you both hop up on Baxter. Baxter <laughs> kind of shakes the blood and some like, loose feathers off his wings, and you guys whoo, vault out. You see trails of mist coming off of the tips of Baxter, uh, Baxter's wings as he goes through like the deeply humid skies of this forest, like moist, almost like trails coming off of his wings. <gasps> as he takes off and you guys fly off. We are going to cut from there uh, to... Uh, bu -bu -bu. Can Baxter have a short rest? <laughs> Please. Uh, Baxter, Baxter cannot have a short rest. Unless you guys Can Baxter one. have a second wind? Uh, uh, no, he may not. Um, uh, no, he may not. Um, uh, incredible. Um, you guys begin flying. Um, we are going to move over to, um, a clearing with Adine. Um, uh, Adine, you are suspended in this orb, uh, prevented from spell casting. Mm -hmm. You can speak, uh, -huh. uh, but are unable to cast spells within this orb. Um, okay. But I can cast message, right? You can I've cast. Been ca I've been able to cast. Message. You've been able to cast message. That's correct. Okay. Um, you see Anguin standing, staring at you. Killian and Arianwin have both walked away. Mm -hmm. um, you see Anguin sort of stalks off into the clearing a little bit, and Aelwin is left standing nearby, keeping an eye on you. Um, what is Adine doing in this moment? Uh, can I message Aelwyn? Yes, you can. 
Um, so I'd like to message Aylwin and say, what are you doing? You don't like these people any more than I do. She messages you back. Adeline, I, I don't like our parents, but I do love them, don't you? They don't love me. Uh, Adeline, You have always been, above all else, steadfast in your ways. Some might even go so far as to say stubborn. Love is something that has to be earned. It's not something- No, it's not. What value does a thing have if it can be freely given? The greatest value of all. A gift given without ask or want? I, I don't understand. I think you do. I think you do understand. Because you're the most defensive person I've ever met. Your defenses are so high. You chose, of all of the schools of magic, to be an abjurative wizard. You won't let people in because you th you're you scared that if you let people in and they reject you, then you're not worth it in some way. I'm not scared. Taking cautions. I have tried to make the right choice as often as I could, and you can't make it in this world alone. You need to have... Aylwin. I don't love our parents. But despite the fact that you have not earned it, I do love you. Do you hear that? I hope you hear that. Uh... There is no response from Aylwin. She... Uh... Give me an insight check. Fifteen. Um, if you had to guess the power of that statement and how much Aylwin needs to hear it uh, is something that she saw coming like a magic missile headed straight for her. And she you watch her eyes go glassy and you watch her fully dissociate j j just to not process that. She like is too scared in this moment. You see Angwin whips around and says, great deal of silence over here in this corner of the clearing. Uh, he walks over um, and you see that he... Um, approaches uh, and you can kind of observe him getting some kind of like sending spell or like a whispering wind spell probably from your mom and you see he looks over at uh, oh also give me a perception check if you'd be so kind 11 um, you see uh, 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 with an 11 perception check, you just see that your father has a sword on his belt that he almost never carries or would wear. Um, uh, but you see, he walks over to you, uh, and as he does so, uh, you see that he's gotten like a look in his eye. Uh, he glances at Aylwin and says, Daughter, the time has come. I need a moment to prepare the punishment that awaits your sister. I would like for you, if you'd be so kind, uh, 
seeing that she has been as recalcitrant as ever to assist her family, uh, kindly scour the information as to what her accomplices are doing from her mind. I'll be waiting for you to complete this task. And you see his uh, hand crackles with light again. And he says, Adine, after your sister rests what you are holding away from you, I'm going to fix you. I hope that you will be grateful. Although if I am successful, I won't have to hope for you to be any way that I wish. Uh, you see, uh, you see Aelwyn looks over at Angwin and goes, um, Father, <laughs> as much as I would love to see Adine suffer, she's, once we have the information from her, let's leave her in the orb. That's what she's most scared of. Uh, you see, your father says, Aelwyn, you've been given an order carry it out. Uh, Aelwyn says, right, but um, you see Angwin for us brown says, Aelwyn, now is not the time to lose your nerve. Do it. Uh, Aelwyn stands there for a second. Um, you can see that her hands are shaking at her side. Um, she I looks, message her, I'm, I'm here with you. I'm with you. Whatever she, you decide to do, I'm with you. She snaps her eyes over to you um, and says, Father, uh, Adine's just, she, she, she's a baby. I, she's, she's, she's a, I, and you see, Angwin goes, a baby? And you see, she says, no, I mean, uh, she, she's a, she's young. There's no, um, you see your dad, uh, uh, just raises a hand and Aelwyn flinches. She turns, looks at you and says, I'm so sorry. Uh, and she casts detect thoughts on you. Um, uh, what does Adine do as Aelwyn begins to cast detect thoughts? I would like to think about all of the times that Aelwyn was almost nice to me, and then at the prompting of our parents, did something cruel instead. Like, I want those to be my surface thoughts. I, like, close my eyes, and that is what I'm thinking about. Um, you think of all the times that Aelwyn chose to be cruel to save herself. Uh, the last time you cast Detect Thoughts on Aelwyn, you walked through a, like, bombed out city. Uh, what is Aelwyn walking through right now as she sees a vision of your mind? Uh, I think it's um, our childhood house in Solace which uh, is most of my childhood memories. I feel like we, we moved there when I was very small. Um, and it's just a series of interconnected rooms that's like my room and her room and my room and her room and my room and her room with each of these memories inside it. She begins to walk through with you. Um, I'm gonna make my first roll. She walks through and doesn't push deeper, even though that's what she's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. She walks in, looks at all these moments, looks up at you and says, well, if you're trying to humiliate me, I suppose it's working. I'm not. We can make new memories. But these are all the memories that I have of you. These are the best memories that I have of you. We will live immortal lives. Do we want to keep playing these patterns out? I don't want to. Um, Aelwyn 
looks out of a window of her room and she wants to go deep. She sees something and wants to go deeper in your mind. Does Adine allow her to do this? Yes. She moves through the window and is at your memory of her in the hot tub after you had rescued her from Calethriel Tower. She looks and looks up at you confused because she doesn't remember this. They broke you, Aylwin. They broke you. For what? For why? They're cruel people. And I'm sorry, but I don't think that they will ever love you. And they'll never even let you make your own decisions. You're just a tool to them. And they'll only keep you around as long as you're useful. You see, now it's becoming even more painful because in your memory, you cast detect thoughts. And there is a memory of you and a memory of Aelwyn going into detect thoughts. And there's the two of you that are here in the present moment that can follow your old selves into that casting of detect thoughts. Look at these ruins. Look, there was no rebuilding this. Elwyn healed, at least mentally, from her protective magic, watches you observe in the destroyed version of her mind all the things that were buried and is forced to confront not only her inner self, but forced to confront the fact that she has always lied to herself about who she is and how she felt, has to confront the fact that you know that, and has to now confront that it's all been mistakes, needless cruelty, and wasted time. She digests all of this, sees all of the things, her in the bed with you, making the ward around you, all the things she said to you when you were in the orb, and has to ingest all of that as someone who brought her old mind back. She will looks you, up. Will you be my big sister? I would really, really love to have you as a big sister. Um, she looks and uh, loses concentration on detect. Uh, tears stream down her face. She loses it, steps back. Um, as she does so, um, you are back in the forest of the Nightmare King. Um, you see um, um, uh, you see uh, that Aylwin is just weeping, standing there, looking like having to reshuffle her entire mind to accommodate all this. Uh, you see Angwin turns to her and says, well then, daughter, were you successful? What are her friends planning? Uh, Aylwin just looks up and can only think to just say the truth, which is, I didn't, I didn't, I, did, I didn't find it. I didn't find her, her friends. I didn't. Angwin kind of like rolls his eyes. <sighs> he looks up um, and as he does so, uh, you see, um, uh, as he does this, uh, he looks up and very well, Adine. 
Time has come for a new and better daughter. His oh, hand hell. crackles with light. He reaches out and says, prepare to be better, dear sweet daughter. Woo! Light races towards your mind as it is an inch away from the orb. The orb <clears throat> covers with an abjurative rune. Aelwyn stands with her hand extended, yeah. her face completely blank and emotionless uh, as the spell is counterspelled. Uh, Angwin looks over at, at Aelwyn, looks I back. I cast Dispel Magic on the orb. Um, you cast Dispel Magic on the orb. Um, <clears throat> uh, the orb dispels. Uh, Angwin, it is Angwin's turn again. Um, uh, hold on one second. Angwin reaches out his hand, extends it to Aelwyn. Counterspell, counterspell, counterspell. He counterspells your counterspell. Fuck. Uh, You hate to see it. You hate to see it. No, I love to see this. No, I mean, get oh, my counters this. I know, I know, get blast, but get wait, you love to like see what? No, no, I love to see what just happened before this. <laughs> yes, yes, agree. Um, agree. Uh, before Adam, whatever dice yes. being rolled. You shatter the orb. You counter. Your dad throws up a counter to your counter spell with a bolt of lightning that races across the field. Uh, in Aelwyn's last moment, she makes eye contact with you. No just says, I'm sorry, and is hit in the chest and blasted back across the field. Adine, it is your turn. Fuck. Um, I, God. Do any cures? I, wizards don't have goddamn cures. <laughs> We don't care about other people. Uh, <laughs> um, I would like to um, cast Adam's Furious Fist yes. Yes. Uh, at a fifth level. Huh. Uh, and I would like to charge my father. Yes. Jesus. Uh, your father with zero remorse on his face, raises up his spell casting hand and whips around to face you as mist and smoke rises from Aelwyn's exhausted, crumpled body. Um, you are standing in the shadow of where your orb was. You cast this spell at the highest spell slot you have available. Your fist cr crackles with white arcane fire. Your father turns around seeing a spell he does not recognize. He is 20 feet away from you. You sprint across the grass of the clearing. Go ahead and make your attack roll. Yeah! Oh no, it's so many D10s that I don't have. Uh, Oh, so um, you're making your attack spell attack. First. attack. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yes, sorry. No worries. Oh, baby. Uh, that's a 24. Oh, wow. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. How many um, D10s is and, it? And he rolls a four on his save. <laughs> So it's 10d10. <laughs> so I look him in the face, him. hold my fist up to him and say, guess what, bitch, I'm strong now. <laughs> <laughs> and I punch him for, oh, uh. Kill your dad. God. Kill, Kill your dad. 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 Kill dad. your no, dad. dad. Uh, 43. Oh, baby. Uh. 51, 59. Oh, I like that. 69, like that. nice. Uh, 70, 
seven points of damage. <laughs> Solid. Wow. 77 points of damage? Yes. As you say, I'm strong now. Adine, you have walked for unending days in the forest of the Nightmare King. You have fought the tides of the wide, misty ocean. Your strength becomes 14, which is an eight point strength increase. Your fist crackles. You rolled a 24 on your attack roll. On his saving throw, your father, Anguin Abernant, automatically fails. He turns, an arcane fist races. 77 points of damage is more than double his max hit points. What? Whoa. <laughs> your father, as your mother said in season one, was never much of a practical caster. Mm -hmm. uh, your father is dead as he leaves the ground and his body oh sails. God. 25 feet through the air and skids across the clearing. Your father Righteous. is no more. You stand, you feel through weeks of hardship in the time that elapsed in your vision in the forest. You never have to be afraid of being weak again. Your father hurt you and he hurt your sister. And no matter what anyone fucking thinks about it, guess what? He never gets to hurt anybody ever again. Cool. You stand in the clearing as the <laughs> light crackles around you and leaves your fist. Uh, Adam, Amazing. Can I are... run to Aylwin and do a medicine check to try and stabilize her? Yes, you can. She is going to roll a death saving throw before that. Great. The damage was not enough to uh, uh, fully put her under. Um, uh, or fu fully kill her. Um, so. Loot your dad. Loot. Oh, baby, you know I'm gonna loot my dad. Gotta loot your dad, dude. I'm strong, I'm gonna take that goddamn sword. Um, Seems like you should just stay with this spell, huh? <laughs> I mean, I can double do what that spell is. Like Put the sword in the fist's hand. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and roll uh, Aylwin's death saves. Uh, you actually don't have to roll the first one because the first one she gets an 11. Incredible. Sorry. Okay. So those are my portrait oh, rolls fuck. gone. Um, hold on one second. Um, uh, so her first one, she rolls an 11. You rush over to her side. Yeah. Uh, as you do so, um, you can make your first check before she makes her second death save. So you're making a medicine check. Mm-hmm. 18. You rush over to Aylwin's side. Uh, you use your last portent. On a 18, you stabilize her. Aylwin is not going to die in this moment. She looks up at you as she begins to enter unconsciousness. Uh, and she says, I don't, I, I don't deserve you, and I don't deserve this. It's not about deserving me, but you definitely don't deserve this. But we can rebuild something better together. I think there's enough room in my room for a bunk bed if you want it. She weeps. She says, had I? I I killed all those people on the ship. I killed the Oracle. Kalina told me that I would be dead if I didn't. I didn't. I worked for Calvaxis. I worked for Kalina. I worked for our parents. You're a child. They made you do it. I you were just... bad people and they were manipulating you. 
they trained you from birth to be obedient to them without question and you were and they rewarded you for it she begins to to fade and she quickly says i listen, listen if i can make up for any of the mistakes i've made i don't know that i ever will but the mistake that they've always made, the heroes have always made when they've defeated the Nightmare King. The, the curses have to be do undone, all of them, including the fifth. All five must be undone. And and there's a, she, she starts to fade a little bit. Um, you see- Fading, can I give her the tincture? Uh, Yes, you can give her one of the tinctures. That is a very wise move. Right. You have the tincture. She looks at you and says, eh. oh, She's gone. She looks up and says, There's a sword. There's a sword on father's side. He stole it from the from the Luminelda's. It's it's supposed to be yours. Not yours, yours, but it's it's yours. It's the oracles. It, it's. You see, she says, "I see you don't have your orb, but but the sword. It's an arcane focus." Oh. I'll take it. You rest here. I'll find mother. Do you want to know something, Adine? Yes. Do you want to know in your freshman year how? Calvaxis knew that you were going to be able to take the book, that you you were going to be the oracle? No. I've always been rather a terrible bitch to you, but I did know, having gotten into the advanced classes at Hudol, <laughs> that they believe that the oracle, because it's not passed through genealogy or anything else, they've always thought that it goes to the most prodigious diviner amongst the elven people. Calvaxis asked me if I could be sure, and I said beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know who the next oracle will be. I love you too. She weeps, clutches your hand, and uh, slips away. Uh, your sister is stable and unconscious here in the clearing, um, and you see um, your father's body across the clearing from you. What does Adine do? Um, I'd like to cast greater invisibility on myself. Um, and take the sword and just do a sort of investigation check on my father to see if there's anything else that I need for all of these rituals and stuff on his body. Um, sorry, give me that one more t time. You're, you're... So, so I'm casting greater invisibility on myself. Cool. And then um, I'd like to take the sword from my father and then see if there's anything else, do an investigation check to see if there's anything else on him that's like obviously for this Nightmare King situation. Um, go ahead and give me um, uh, the investigation check. You find a note that says he always loved you and he just wanted to make you stronger <laughs> and he knew he had to push you to the edge to become the yeah, ultimate baby, elven full anime. Let's do it. And full full anime. Anime. I hope I don't get punched. Well, I go to 25. Do I find the note, Brennan? <laughs> Uh, oh, do you find the note? <laughs> um, uh, uh, you see, hold on one sec. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba, hold on. Um, you, what did you get on your investigation? Sorry. 25. 25. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, on a 25, you find no note on your father's body. All the important magical shit went with your mom. He's got nothing to recuse him from being the absolute bastard that he was. Um, <laughs> Any cash? Yeah, any cold hot cash. <laughs> yeah, you get 30 gold pieces. How's that? Sick. <laughs> the um, crisp $20 bill. 
Oh, yeah. I was saving this for your birthday card, wow, but he here just it is. just went to the bank. This is crazy. <laughs> um, Ooh, in, uh, incredible. Um, uh, so, um, bum, 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 um, uh, you pull the sword off. Uh, 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 do you want? Do you do, you do anything? So you look at the sword. You see that it has an el- elven eye glyph set into a two-sided pommel on each side, like a sort of geometric, cool eye glyph. Um, uh, uh, if you want to cast identify on it, you can. Um, um, identify. I only have stocked as a ritual, so it'll take me ten minutes. Gotcha. Um, cool. I'll do it as soon as I. Um, have figured out what's happening with my mom and found a hiding place. Cool, copy that. Um, uh, Awesome, you take off. Uh, We are going to cut over. Just the hits keep coming. Um, The hits (laughs) keep coming. uh, Incredible. Um, um, We are in the celestial gallery with Riz and Fig. Um, you guys are bound, so your your hands are bound, so there's no like somatic components really that you can't do in your spells. Uh, the vines also have grown around and bound your mouths at this point. Um, you see the unicorn skeletally tromps through the glade and you see it speaks in your minds. Uh, you see it goes, <sighs> Friends be as well. The time of the king's return is upon us. Uh, you see fake fig walks out of the forest smiling with baby behind her. And you see that she snaps her fingers and the vines all wrap around baby. Uh, baby goes, oh, it's gonna kill me, please. Um, and you see that uh, he gets wrapped up in vines. Um, uh, you see that uh, the unicorn looks at fake Fig. Fig goes, um, hi, so um, I'll be happy to you know, continue uh, this little deal we've got going. Uh, should I keep the disguise on for now? And you see that the unicorn says, the time for trickery is over. Bring forth your brethren. Coming out of the jungle, you guys see dozens to hundreds of Bargura, Vrox, a legion of demons starts to stalk the gallery and specifically just like a dozen each, just like watching your every move. Fake Fig sheds this illusion, and you see a full-blown Merilith, which is a towering, multi-armed snake woman with, like, torso and head of a woman, many arms holding different weapons, and this giant snake's body. These are, like, the captains of the abyss. You see, she says, Yes, the loyalty of the demon folk to the Nightmare King stands for now. Unicorn. Um, the you, uh, you see the unicorn responds to the Merilith, uh, and says, Keep them here. Soon their friends will join, and when the king returns, they shall walk in the world, hidden as his servants. The unicorn leaves the glade, and you guys are left with truly an army of demons here in front of you. Um, what is going on in each of your guys' minds? Okay. Um, so right now, I can't use verbal or somatic components. So I think I'm hoping to try to wiggle in a way that my um, that my lighter in my pocket will <laughs> light everything on fire to free me. <laughs> I, I think, uh, yes. yeah. And as I see, as I see Fig doing that, I think Riz knows 
she's going to be the only one to be able to get us out of this, um, away from all these dudes. I'm going to pull a real secret agent move and use my watch and try to shoot the laser at um, Fig's mouth. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Ooh, actually, I prefer if you did my hands because I want, me to want hands? somatic more. Okay, <laughs> as you do like a nod thing, I shoot at the at the um, wrists. Cool. Go um, off the ball. With In order to move your wrist, you would need to move <laughs> your hand, and in order to move your hand, you're going to have to spring out of some of these bonds. Make a perception check for me real quick. Okay. Uh, does my inquisitive or my, my steady eye doesn't give me Actually, perception. let's do investigation. Give me investigation. You love to see that. That's a 17. Okay, you're still holding your briefcase in your hand. You're gonna have to probably drop that to be able to move and get the and like get your your like watch hand free. Um, and what that about? Might, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, as long as you're not <laughs> too worried about raising suspicion, like I don't know, like the demons are watched, so it's like right. it's like, it's a calculated risk. Whatever Riz would do. Okay. Um, before contra- he's, before he said, okay, go on. No, go ahead. I was going to say, before he said that, well, would something that originates from my pick require verbal and somatic? It would. It's still casting okay. a spell, unfortunately. Go on then. Yeah. Um, I think despite what the unicorn said, it is the time for tricks. Uh, yeah. So Riz is going to, <laughs> ooh, you know, at some point, you have to grow up and drop the briefcase. I drop the briefcase, um, and I'll use my wrist to shoot at um, Fig's um, binds. Uh, hell yes. Awesome. You drop the briefcase. Uh, uh, I'm going to say that this is an attack with disadvantage because you're still restrained. I wink at him. Bardic inspiration. Hell yeah. You don't need you any to see it. for that. Cool. You'd love to see it. Please. Okay. Okay. So I'm a D8, babe. Okay, a D8. So I have <laughs> right now I have a 13. Uh-huh. Um, and then I need a D8. Oh. So that's gonna be a seven or an eight on that D8. Am I correct? To get yes. What? Uh, to hit, to hit, to hit the. I have to get a 20. Got to get a 20. So it's got to be a seven or an eight. You can do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. We believe in you, the bull. It's a four. Oh. All right, I'm gonna narrate what happens next. You fire your watch. The demons begin to hoot and holler with laughter. You can tell they kind of want you to escape because they want to be able to like kill you guys. Um, you fire it. Give me another perception check with advantage. Uh, perception or investigate? Uh, investigate. Uh, 29. 29? No one is moving to stop you from shooting again. The 29 investigation, the briefcase, the ball's briefcase, is jiggling a little bit. Fig. (laughs) You are the recipient of a sending spell in your mind. You receive a sending spell. Um, And you hear a voice say, uh, uh, me darling lass. Wanted to tell you, uh, uh, we sold all six suits of armor, and I have your cut waiting, Bill Seacaster. Am I allowed to respond? You are allowed to respond. Can I sort of send him a drop a pin and send it back to him? <laughs> yeah, you can do and that. And just say, like, um, how about you pay me? in a favor um give and me then a, i drop a pin uh and i'll also say currently bound trying to get some shit off me so i can cast spells um hell yeah give me an insight check as well if you'd be so kind that's a nat one <laughs> um bill is trying to <laughs> fuck you over. There are seven deadly sins, and he's telling you that he sold all six suits of armor. Oh, so he saved one. Oh, 
I just, I can't deal with this right now. I really can't deal with this right now. Enough is going on. I don't need someone else in my life trying to fuck me over. Um, uh, uh, you see that, um, uh, so, uh, you're like, yeah, he's fucking you over. Riz, you see the ball's briefcase is like hopping a little bit, but the clasp on it is locked. Try again. I'll cool. take a sh- I'll take a shot at the at the latch. Cool. This is all. This is just a latch on a briefcase. It's only an AC of twelve. Okay. Disadvantage. Uh, still disadvantage. Yes. Do I get to roll anything to try to have my um my lighter light me on fire? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Give me a flat luck check. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I got a sixteen. Sixteen is not bad. Uh, what's that? What's that, Murph? I got a, I got a fifteen on my attack. Uh. Murph, you, as the demons laugh at you, the Merolith starts to slither and says, oh, he's found a little way to fight, has he? Come on. You hit the latch. As you hit the latch, uh, you see uh, the briefcase pops open and a golden suit of infernal armor stumbles out, collapses to the ground, with a huge glowing golden halberd. Uh, as it does so, you see it stands wobbling. The Merilith looks, you, the visor is up and you can't see who it is yet. The Merilith stands up and says, uh-huh. armor of sin, it will latch on to whatever pride you have and destroy you. Galir stands Oh! <laughs> You see Galir stands up and says, in my haste to put the armor on, I buckled the leg plate and I think I've, I think I've clipped the tip of my penis against one of the leg plates. And every time I move, I, it feels like it might come off the tip of, so let me assure you, demon, I have no pride. <laughs> Roiling with golden red light, Galir surges forward <laughs> and heads the Marilith in one yes, shot. Sir. Yes, sir. Looking up to see which, I was like, I know Galir has that seventh one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Galir moves through these demons like a force of hell itself, beheading <laughs> Gorin. Rah! Every time he moves, you hear, oh God, my penis is good. I can't take you on the step. Can I pull my tie to record it? Um, uh, none of you. <laughs> I just want everyone to be able to see Galir's big day. Um, you pull your tie. Uh, no demons are watching you. Um, if you uh, uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, try to break loose. Uh, go ahead. Uh, the bonds are DC 20. You have advantage on these checks, which cancels out the disadvantage. So it's just you have uh, you get a you get a plus fourteen to this roll. You got to beat a DC twenty. What what are we rolling for this? Uh, he's using his Arcadian watch. Oh, can I just try to break free with like strength? <laughs> um, give me no, a strength check. Nothing. Okay. Uh, thirty-three. Jesus Christ. Uh, Riz, your spy watch goes into action. A little a saw of radiant light cuts you loose from this, and you boom, uh, are out of your bonds uh, uh, and have fully like James Bonded yourself out of these uh, bindings. Um, uh, Fig is right across from you. Galir is moving through these demons, just roaring with flame. Um uh, uh, what does Riz do in this moment? Uh, I'll help uh, Fig get out. Cool. Uh, give me one more check. This You're not bound anymore, so go ahead and give me one with advantage. Sweet. Um, That's a flat 20. Uh, hell yeah. Uh, uh, Fig, you are loosed from your ba- from your bindings uh, as uh, uh, something has changed in the way Galir is moving. Like, the armor has fully taken over. He is a fucking storm. Um, yeah. The demon's all begin to uh, uh, flee and vanish and disappear. Um, oh my God. Uh, you see uh, standing there in this golden armor, the visor down, uh, this last like uh, rock demon is impaled, split, whoo, and you see Galir <laughs> like spins the halberd behind his back, <laughs> plants it in the ground, goes into a three point crouch. The armor 
Uh, the armor opens up, and Galir's fully dead body is vomited out onto the ground <laughs> what? in front of you. Fully dead? <laughs> Full stop dead. Uh, um, fully dead. Riz, what? do you what? have any any diamonds on you? Uh, uh, I'm going to need Gorgog and Fabian to give me some perception checks. Okay. Uh, yeah. Are we do you... blind? Do we get yes, advantage? <laughs> uh, I, I don't have any... Diamond so team, seventeen. Uh, twenty six. Twenty six. Okay, you guys, uh, you guys spot infernal fire coming up from one of the the islands, uh, and can fly there with Baxter. Okay, Brennan, uh, yes, I'm going go. to I'm going to yeah. use prestidigitation, uh, because illusion is real here. I'm going to use prestidigitation. You create a non magical trinket or illusory image that you can fit in your hand. I'm going to create a diamond in my hand and then revivify <laughs> Galir. Okay, I'm gonna need to make it. I'm gonna need a DC 25 performance check because you okay. are tr- because you are trying to like make a diamond beautiful enough that it would be worth that. Much. Okay. We, can we fly down? You guys can yeah. fly down. Yes. Uh, is there anything I can do to help Fake with this? Uh, you can give her the help action. Yeah. Okay. Can we get there before this happens? Or yeah, do we get to see any of Galia's most beautiful day? As you guys are descending, you see the fullness, but you just see a golden suit of armor, so you don't know what's happening until you guys land and Galia gets vomited out. We're cheering and letting out choking sobs with advantage. Gosh. I don't get it. Yeah, I got. Can he? Can um, you get a bardic? A Twenty. Can you get a bardic from Fabian? Uh, uh, yes. Zach. Oh, from Fabian. Me, uh, Zach, give me. A, you can get a. You want a bardic from Fabian? You can yes, of course. Uh, spring break. I believe in you. Oh, okay. Also, what's happening? <laughs> Galia so rules it. He's dead. I got Twenty-seven. Does that count? A perfect diamond to put <laughs> in your hand. <laughs> um. Uh. Fig. You uh, rush forward to Galir's dead body prostrate on the ground. Um, uh, what do you do as you as you rush over? Um, I take him in my arms and I say, I was always, I've always been afraid that I'm more like you than I am like mom. But now I know that I'm actually proud that I'm more like you than I am like mom. And I keep him in my arms and then I bring him back to life. Um, you see that flaming anarchy symbol appears over his heart and a portal appears into his chest of flame. You reach your hand in, hold his heart, and with the warmth and heat of the fire from your hand, squeeze his heart and <gasps> your father comes back to life. Um, Ooh, you... Can I also say that I like I did a, um, can I also say that I used my bass guitar to almost like restart his heart? Hell yeah, I love that. Okay. Boom, Boom. Hit that power chord. Um, he uh, uh, he snaps back to it, uh, and as he does so, uh, you, uh, Siglier, <gasps> comes to all, all these wounds over his body. Um, you say he's naked? Uh, don't look. Know, don't actually, look. Let a man have his privacy. Um, okay. All actually, right. you know what? Stop looking at. Galir is naked. Uh, uh, everyone make a dexterity saving throw to not look at Galir's junk while he's naked. I get to you said, I have a, a danger sense, so I can do this with two. I'm going to say, Fabian, you roll disadvantage. I only God got damn a, it. I have 13. 13. Oh, uh, dirty 20. I gotta think I don't see it. I get a flat 10. Fabian and Riz? <laughs> Galir? Is no. hung like a goddamn horse. Fuck he off! Is... No, he's not. <laughs> I just share a look with Fabian. I full, yeah, I fully look the ball I dead just, in his I, eye. I mean, anyone who got a fourteen or lower, you know, I you know for it. a fact that Galir is packing like nobody. You've been in locker rooms. It doesn't matter. Nobody you've ever seen. <laughs> it doesn't uh, matter. He's the chosen, he's the chosen one. Thanks. He truly he's the is chosen, chosen one. The ball. <laughs> I knew uh, it. I knew it all along, and now I know it for sure. Um, Galir <gasps> comes back to life, uh, quickly protects his, his modesty, looks at you, Fig, puts a hand on your head and says, <laughs> Daughter, are you all right? Are you yes. safe? Yes, yes, I am. I am specifically because of you. You you just saved me and you saved Riz and you saved Baby as soon as I free him. <laughs> Baby, you see Baby screams, don't free me, I like this. Um, <laughs> okay, um, we'll build one of those for you at home. Oh, I don't deserve to go around and do things. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, uh, 
you see Galir look and just full weeping. He's like, he goes, my darling daughter, I am so glad you are safe. I, I, I am sorry I, I stole the armor from the bottomless pit. I just didn't know any other way that, that if, if it came down to it, I would be able to protect you. Uh, oh. You have nothing to apologize for. This means everything to me. Uh, I died. I died really quick. <laughs> really quick in there. It's hard because as soon as I started to kick ass, I started to feel like I was cool. And then the armor just really killed me right away. Galir, yeah. that was the coolest yeah. goddamn thing I've ever seen. Oh, you're the yeah. coolest guy. You see full tears. <laughs> he looks around and says, well, I am very glad that you, I'm glad it was worth doing. And if it was cool, then that's fine. And if I clipped my penis into the armor by accident and then <laughs> and then started to and then started to feel like I was doing a good job and then the armor and then that's pride and then the armor found Oh it's very it's you know, it's um, very you see what I mean? It's very like, hard to be kicking Galeer, a lot of ass. Yes. Galeer, don't you realize though that this opened a well in you? You've been missing out. I think you could use a little pride. So maybe putting on this armor sort of opened an untapped reservoir that's maybe been neglected. And maybe you should dip into that and, and try a little pride. Drink deeply, Galir. Drink deeply of the well of pride. <laughs> Feel free to go a little okay? too far. You're so far <laughs> in the other direction. His penis is fine, Gorgug. I'll tell yes, you that it's... right now. His penis is perfectly okay. okay. I'm not sure why there's, I'm feeling some animosity here. I'm not sure why. I feel like no, I, didn't, I didn't see the whole thing, but from what I saw, it looked fine. I didn't you see saw, it at all, but something tells it, me it's fine. It was like all over right. the leg and a little bit into like some bushes nearby. <laughs> that's what? No, no. Oh my God. That's, that's all right. <laughs> Look, everyone, I, uh, oh, that was, that was wild and I, I suppose if I have enough pride that I can be killed by devil armor, then I should have enough pride to know that when push came to shove, I did what was necessary to protect my daughter and her friends. So I feel that I've done what I needed to do. And if this was my contribution and I had to die and again, hurt my penis very badly, then that is, <laughs> then that is all to the good. Dad. Some cl oh, go on, Sorry, Dad. yes. No. no, you go, Dad. I was going to say some clothes would be wonderful. Well, I can make things that are the size of my hand, so I make some. I make some small clothing for him. I just for some pressed reason, in digitation. Some I clothing. for some reason have been holding on my inventory a leather jacket from the Johnny Spells fight in the first season. <laughs> Can I just give him a leather jacket? Perfect. So, so Fig Fig creates a crumpled up pair of briefs, which is like what you can create. And so Galir is wearing no shirt, leather jacket, pair of tidy whities. That's all he's got. Oh my god! Now this dude fucks. <laughs> yes, he does. Um, hey, uh, we're we're here with the. We found Baxter, but we didn't find your yeah. mom, by the way, and. I think she might be under a spell still. Mm -hmm. Under a spell? What do you mean? Um, she attacked Baxter. So she's, I think she, I don't know what's going on, but she, Baxter is pretty hurt and he had a bunch of arrows in him. Well, I'm Wolf sure healed him. just some kind of spell, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I just, I think we should be ready for that. Okay. Also, uh, yeah, I only have one spell slot left, so I can only heal one more person ever. I've got, um, I've got healing word if anyone needs it. Okay, can I, I cast spare the dying on Galir's penis. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ad, you guys turn around as you hear someone approaching. Adine rushes into the clearing, uh, oh. holding holding a sword. Oh, you cool? Oh, hey, 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 you cool? Hey. I'm you cool. cool. Wait a I'm, second. I'm Don't strong. use that on I us. I have a sword now. I'm not going to use it on you. Okay. Wait, okay. is everybody... Everybody's here. We've, Except for Kristen. Except for Kristen. Yes, Kristen. And also Sandra Lynn. I... We think she attacked Baxter. 
And Rog's oh, still dude. missing in Tracker. And Rog is still tracker. missing in Tracker. The van. The van. Wait, is the van here? And Ida, and of course, Ida. but we know where Ida is. We know that Ida is at the Sanctum at the cottage. Wait, which place are we at right now? Is that not the Celestial place? You guys are are in the Celestial Gallery uh, uh, that you can sense other Celestials off in the woods. You're near where Ida would be. If oh, my God. Oh. Let's go to yeah. Ida. Oh. Let's uh, I, do have, it. We... I have Locate Creature. We can cast Locate Creature on Ida. Yeah. Uh, can you can't make Galia get back in the suitcase real quick. How did he get in the suitcase? Wait, I can't cast Locate Creature. Or oh, the briefcase, box, excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, uh, oh, you see that... Um, uh, uh, what is it? oh um Galeer, I think I would, we just Galeer walked looks, by it. Galir says uh, after Sigaroth told me I was not allowed to come, I knew you wouldn't let me, so I took the armor while you were sleeping and I hid in uh, Riz's briefcase. Okay. <laughs> That's wow. Incredible. Me. That's What's awesome it like move. in there? Um I was extremely oxygen deprived for a long time. So what I tried to do was uh, every time I felt like there was a rest or some stop of movement, I would pop out and open, try to open it. But the last time I did it, the latch came down and um, and I, I also, fe- there's a lot of stuff in here and I fell down and knocked some things over. So it's been eventful. But... That's, yeah. Well, it was all worth it. And I guess I if, if I don't even know that we need locate creature to find Ida because I literally got marched by her and I have her I have her feather maybe her feather yeah. will Do you want to you want to hop on Baxter and Yeah. He's only got 3 HP but okay. Yeah, I can hop on Baxter and I can just kind of fly around to try and find where I was when I felt her. Right. Um incredible. Um uh, so you're gonna, you guys are gonna go run and find, uh, you're gonna go on Baxter and find Ida. What are the rest of you doing who are staying in the clearing for right now? I would like to cast Identify on my sword. Hell yes, cool. Um, so you go ahead to cast Identify on the sword. Um, as you do so, um, you see that, um... ah, yes, this is another use of the Identify spell. The object that you now hold in your hand is known as the Sword of Sight, the ancestral sword of the Oracle of the Elves, constructed in ages long past by Telamine Luminelda. While wielding this weapon that has a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls, you gain the following benefits. Your base armor class while wearing no armor is 12, which would bump your AC up to 15. You may cast Divination Cantrips as a bonus action. Anytime you cast a Divination spell, you gain the benefit of the Dodge action. You do not have disadvantage on melee attacks made with this weapon against creatures you cannot see. Your grandfather made the sword. Fabian. Very cool. That's my grandpapa. He's really good at (laughs) slow, but good. Slow, but good. Very good. Um, I'd like to really quick, um, because I'll probably have to tape over this with something more important, but I'd like to play um, Galir uh, kicking <laughs> demons' asses and take a video of it with my crystal. And then, uh, oh, yeah. upload it to our cool account. I'll, yes. say, I'll upload it to the cool account. It looks like a, fa- like a found footage viral marketing campaign. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yes. Just um, it's called Galir absolutely going mad, mad on these lads. <laughs> <laughs> uh incredible. Um uh so um we're going to cut back to uh uh we are going to cut now back to uh Kristen Applebee's. Uh Kristen, what's going through your mind as you walk through the terror of the Nightmare King's forest? All right, I have something to say. (laughs) Okay, so I have no spells. Correct. I've been, I wouldn't say forsaken since it was more my actions, but uh, I don't have soul. I don't have the moon goddess. Mm -mm. Um, okay. (laughs) Fuck. I would like to use my blood to start 
drawing as fast as I can what I saw of this towering goddess being hit with lightning. I want to try to recreate that visual. Give me a religion check. Hey, okay, that is a 20. That is a 25. No, sorry, 24. The bark of the trees hungrily drinks in the blood. And ah. as your dirty fingers smear the shape of this face, the blood moves across the surface of the tree. Sap begins to bleed out from the rivets of the bark. And you see that the sap is a deep, viscous red. Beware of what you give a face and what you give a name. Power there is in these things, but perhaps more power there yet remains in the nameless and the unseen. You know what is unseen even now. She is behind you and not far on your trail. She is hungry, Kristen. And when she finds you, the kiss she gives you will be your last. I don't care. Um, I paint, I paint this picture of this face of the, uh, the unknown goddess and I get down completely like flat, like not even bowing, just full body down face on the ground to worship it. Um, making myself maybe now the representative of like a hundred percent of her followers. If as so above, so below, I am, yeah, I am now representative of 100% of her followers. And uh, I believe she's real and I believe she's good and that she uh, can come back against, it seems like the Nightmare King wanted to get rid of her and the Twilight, you know, all the elves got rid of her as well. Uh, everyone's against her, but I'm on... I'm her number one follower. Uh, you get down underneath this tree, your hands covered in blood, the image of the unnamed goddess in front of you. You begin to pray. You stop running and you can feel something in the forest, hungry, drawing closer to you. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I I mean, I, I feel like yeah, go. People need to know what they're worshiping. They have this kind of like knowledge is power is control, but I think that that's all an illusion. None of us really know why we're here and this God is perfect for me. And I'm still just, yeah, wholeheartedly a uh, follower of this mystery. You reach out, give me a religion check. Uh, uh, you roll that with advantage anyway, but go ahead and give me a religion check. Okay. Uh, 18. Um, you begin to pray. As you do, you see the blood on the tree changes. A beautiful face looks out at you and says, you, all I ever wanted was to be there for people in the darkness and tell them that the night can't hurt you. That the things that you are afraid of in shadow are still dangerous in the light of day and that there is nothing in the darkness other than mystery. I just wanted to hold their hand when they couldn't see. You feel this idea of like, this being reaching out to you and saying, 
everyone abandoned and destroyed me. And you see a flash of images. You see this weird undead like pixie or sprite that looks like it's like a cicada husk like layers of its skin are paper dry and like flaking off as it like chitters around you see what looks like a sculpture made of rotting wood and old moss covered stone in the shape of a centaur but like a rotting it's like jaw is missing and like hanging loose made of like old rotted wood but with real bone teeth set into the wood uh and no eyes just smooth wood over the top of its face you see this uh like uh insane uh treant, like living tree that is bound by iron bands all over it that are clearly cutting into its wood and it looks like huge and enraged. And you see the elf that Adine saw in her scrying on Kalina, the one that was in the tree with the vines going into his mouth that was all diseased and covered in pustules. Um, you uh, see these flickers when she talks about people betraying her and realize that these are the court of elders. These people and the unicorn are the people that, you know, like you've read a lot of shit about the high elves tricking people, but it, by the same token, these people worshiped this goddess and allowed themselves to be tricked. They did not listen to the visions that the goddess sent them. They betrayed their, you know, it's not just the high elves that committed this betrayal. It was the followers of the goddess as well. Um, yeah. You have an image of the Nightmare King that you still can't think of how to piece into this. You're not sure how the Nightmare King figures into all of this. Yeah. Um, and as you have that thing of like, the Nightmare King kills the goddess, there is a little moment of residual fear and you feel that residual fear sever this vision and this connection. Not fully, but you feel yourself like gain intimacy and then as you become afraid of the nightmare king lose a little bit of intimacy and you are back in the clearing on your knees praying a sphere of twilight surrounds you uh your embrace of doubt surrounds you and licking her chops in full wolf form her mouth covered in blood is tracker staring at you hungrily is the twilight from tracker ah baby that's from you that's from me that's from you uh you do are do i feel pa like spells come to me or like is this like a um uh you uh i'm going to say does Kristen have fear of following the unnamed goddess in her heart still or not? It, what is her conviction in her following that path? Zero, zero fear, all conviction. <laughs> Your spells return, Kristen is a Twilight Domain cleric. <laughs> oh! Nice. Yeah, bitch! Okay, um, yeah, yeah. Tracker is in front of me, right? Tracker is there. She is being abjured. You realize that you that your Twilight Domain is not like Tracker's. She is a moon priestess. She follows that like primal path of the goddess whose followers killed the unnamed goddess. Your shit is like pure nighttime. It is like it your like the goddess, you've realized that like doubt is impossible to hold as a conviction in your heart but a love and embrace of mystery is a belief you can hold in your heart and that feeling of standing in the middle of the nighttime in the deep forest and not being afraid that's the power that now rests in your heart um tracker looks at you uh, uh, uh yeah what is what is Kristen doing this moment I cast greater invisibility on myself. Um, you cast greater invisibility? <laughs> um, Tracker <laughs> snarls, and you hear a voice ring out from her. Uh, Tracker does a good job of keeping her lycanthropy in check. This is a curse. 
You see this has taken her fully. You see, she says, Where are you running? Why don't you want to be close to me? Why don't you accept me like I am? You're so fucking selfish. It's always about your quest, your journey, your doubt, your mission. And what do I do? Just support you? I'm so tired, I could, I could rip you apart! I walk around behind her and I slam my staff down and cast greater restoration on her. Uh, you slam the staff down, cast greater restoration. Uh, now this is something that I have to look up to see if you can cast this on an unwilling creature. Hold on one second. I have a backup uh, plan, if not. <laughs> Do you have a dart? <laughs> no, you just have a potion. I just have a potion. <laughs> no one would trust me, all right? <laughs> we should have given Kristen gun? a dart gun. No, Seems like absolutely we should have given not. Kristen a dart gun. <laughs> right. You all well, should have given me a lot of guns. We I guess we could physically use the dart. Yeah, not bad. Now so I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna home rule this as a like may. It's it is a like melee attack, melee spell attack. So go ahead, you have a plus nine to this. Trackers. Um, uh, trackers, bu -bu -bu. Um, where is tracker? Hold on. Uh, trackers armor class is uh, 13. So you just have to roll a four or higher. What'd you get? Three. A three. Um, Fuck. Your hand moves through Tracker. You see, you are incorporeal. You're still dead or undead or whatever thing you are. And you see that you are sucked away as Tracker screams out, in pain, just howling and says, why are you leaving me? I always knew you were gonna leave me. Oh. Um, and uh, you are gone. As I'm being taken away, can I, um, fuck, never mind. I don't want to do that. Oh, fuck. Okay, yeah, never mind. Sorry. Um, you zoom off as you do so. Um, uh, as you zoom away from there, um, you see the forest filling you with visions. <laughs> uh, you see the face of the Nightmare King as the forest races past you, you're zooming through it. The Nightmare King says, Rushes into you. Can I roll uh, for to get to fight that? Uh, uh. Because I think death is the ultimate mystery. I think it's fine that she's dead. Uh, fuck yeah. And in fact, you you said you're doing your Twilight Domain thing, right? So like, yeah. <laughs> you can just end the fear effect on yourself. This Nightmare King just starts throwing vision after vision of you. It throws you visions of the fact that you abandoned your your following of Helio, you know, people, all of those second guesses of the fact that you chose a harder life for yourself, hands down. You, like, your brothers are left behind, your parents are confused, and everything you've ever been afraid of, every weird, irrational story you've ever told yourself about why you're bad, and that final fear comes in front of you. What do you think Kristen's final fear she faces is? What's the last thing she sees that the Nightmare King does to try to break her? I mean, I just saw Tracker so messed up. Maybe it's like, maybe it's like 
Helio or someone coming and saving like all of my friends and I was just so wrong like couldn't have been more wrong and I just died totally alone without taking like the easy answers that were offered you look back and the fear that the Nightmare King uses that you feel about to snap your soul in half is that exact fear you got told your entire childhood that the world would tempt you that the devil always sounds convincing and that if you strayed from the path you would be lost and what did you do when you went to egg fort exactly what your parents said you strayed from the path and you left because you were so sure you were right and you still haven't found the answers that you thought you could find and would it have been so bad to be wrong if you were just going to be wrong anyway this way and be miserable and you feel that you feel that that's the the best card the nightmare king can play as you are whisking through space and time what does Kristen do as you break that fear off of you I think I think about how um the who who was the god that I just talked to that's like tracker's god Galakea Galakea I I think about how she just straight up lied it, like she's clearly grasping at straws for power. She said that the Nightmare King killed her sister when in reality she convinced all of her sister's followers to forget her. Like it just seems like everybody is after it's a power grab and everybody's basic and wrong. <laughs> <laughs> As you say, everybody is basic and wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you leave the realm of fear. Cool. Uh, <laughs> you're drawing spells from a divinity that is gone, and the spells are working. And you got killed, but you didn't die. And anyone who can look at those facts and think they know how the cosmos works is crazy. And the only sane thing to do is to accept that all of this and the way it all fits together is more complex than any being, even a god, could understand. And the honesty of the divinity you've chosen that says, mortals, I also don't know, fills you with more hope and peace than you can imagine. You are floating above all of your friends in a clearing. You can see them all. Uh, it doesn't really make sense, but you feel something in one of your friend's pockets. I believe it's Adine, or it's either Adine or Fig. Who took Kristen's finger bone? Adine. You feel drawn to something in Adine's pocket. Okay, I go reach into Adine's pocket. <laughs> um, Do you feel something? You guys watch as a finger bone, okay, yeah. Kristen, Kristen's finger bone floats up into the air. What the hell? Fuck? <gasps> I uh, hate this place. Uh, as you guys do that, um, uh, I'm gonna attack it. I, I I get crit automatically on objects. So. <laughs> Pull out my gun. Max damage on this finger. Um, I think I'm on Baxter. I think I might not be there. Uh, Kristen, uh, you're holding your own finger bone. Mm, um, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> um, maybe you died. Maybe this is some new thing. You think it might be impossible for you to come back to life, but uh, you feel 
um, these like new s spells and miracles filling your body coming from this unknown source. Um, the fact that something is impossible maybe doesn't mean anything. Um, you feel a potential that you could maybe, if you wanted to, cast Ray's dead on yourself. Whoa. I cast Ray's dead on myself. <laughs> you guys look, see the finger bone. It turns into a single point of light, like a distant star. Of course and the night sky appears behind it and opens with a halo of softly scintillating shadow depicting a starry nighttime sky. Uh, St. Kristen Applebee's walks out of void, ah. having raised herself from the dead as your finger reattaches and forever after glows with a little bit of starlight. Oh, that's hot for being gay. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Um, uh, awesome. Uh, Kristen has returned. You guys see Kristen back with you. Kristen! Am I Kristen? there? Kristen? Am I there? Yes, you are still there. You guys have not left on Baxter yet. Kristen, I'm sorry. I tried to revivify you. And then I went into this tunnel and it, it was scary. And then we found you and it was bones. Your, your bones were really old. Yeah. It's like you bones died 600 years old. ago or I, something. I chased that unicorn. I thought that the unicorn took you, but then it it didn't because- Are you the okay? unicorn? No, the unicorn is bad. The unicorn is part of like a council of elders and all of them fucked over my new god. And it's the only one alive, it seems like. New Wait, god? Gorgug, I died again. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I'm so sorry. I wasn't there. It's no, it's it's okay. It's just it's different. The second, the second, the second time. time different. Okay, it's you. It's like meeting That's the boss. It's like the boss level. I got to see a bunch of different gods. They all were bad. Oh, um, yeah, sure. no, but anyway, yeah. Now I'm. Um, uh, oh wait, I saw Tracker. Tracker is really fucked up. How have you, have you guys? Are you good? Did you find everybody? Like um, we can't you know, find Ida, Sandra Lynn. We know where we Ida. I felt like I killed my dad. You killed yes! your dad? Oh my god! Oh, I hug you. I hug you. <laughs> Damn! Congrats! That's good. Uh, I love day. that for you. Ugh, <laughs> man. I had to leave Elwyn, but I we weren't very far away. I feel like, can should I- Should we wake can her? I, should we go can there? I, can we get her? Can we go back to where I left Elwyn? Uh, yes. So there's so there's Ida to get. There's yes. Elwyn to get. Galir is here with you guys as well. The chosen um, one. Tracker. I believe it now. Tracker, Tracker Rog, uh, Rog, Rog. And, you know, and you know that your mom is somewhere off doing the ritual. Um, uh, so, uh, and then yeah, what about uh, Sandra Lynn? Uh, yeah, Sandra, Sandra Lynn, Lynn, you you haven't seen Sandra Lynn yet, nor have you guys seen Rog. Um, okay. Uh, so, okay, so they're somewhere together. Should uh, we try to? How much time <laughs> do we have? Uh, I don't. I think you guys probably don't think you have too much time. Okay. Um, uh, who's who's going to go get? Uh, Ida, who's going to go get Aelwyn, and is there a, a, anything else people are doing? Can I While take we're doing? Oh, sorry. Either Kristen or Gorga. Oh, uh, you only have. I'll either have Kristen one or Gorga. Total. Just to, she just needs to be brought back up. I can do it. Yeah, I can do it now. I think I, um, I could also use someone with heels. I don't know how hurt Ida is. Oh, I think that's just. You're right. Do you Who have has anecdotes? Kristen? Who do we need I mean, to uh, heal? I do not. I tried I, to heal Tracker, but I fucked up. I can go. If if Kristen wanted to come with me, I, I could try to get Tracker with a dart. Yes, yeah, I think that will work. She's really rabid. Kristen, you're the only one that can really heal anyone also. Is there a way to get everybody in one spot? Because I have some new kind of like aura abilities that I can heal and protect people if we get us stacked. Okay, I can go just grab Ida on Baxter and bring her yeah. back to be healed by you. That's a good idea. Yeah, Fig, do uh, you Fabian, have any... do you want to come on an Aelwyn rescue mission with me? Uh, I would love to. Fig, do you have oh. any heals? 
I have um, bonus action healing words. Okay. I have some heals that I could try to heal Baxter with. I have a cure wounds. Oh. Um, uh, cool. Uh, you got so it sounds like you guys are gonna split up. Adine and Fabian are gonna go uh, uh, to get Aelwyn. Uh Fig and Gorgug and F Fig and who else is gonna go get Ida? I can go wherever. What makes sense for? I think I could go with Fig. You, you yeah, Fig. why don't you come with me? That makes no sense. And then Riz and Chris. Uh, Galir is going to go with Fig as well. Um, uh, Riz and Kristen are going off to go try to find Tracker. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Hell I yeah. just healed Baxter for twenty, by the way, with a four. Yeah. Look at that. Um, uh, also, our final bad kid to do this. Uh, Kristen's intelligence bumps up. Uh, two points to 14. Hey! Uh, not Dex? Smart kids. Not Dex. Great. It's not the Dex, though. Not Dex, though? Yeah, not that Dex, though. Yeah. I don't know what Dex? you guys are talking about. I'm very dexterous. <laughs> have uh, I ever, like, fallen down? You fell down right now. You're on the ground. Uh, you don't, you don't bend your knees out? when you walk. <laughs> yes. Uh, incredible. You guys split up. Uh, we're going to take a short break here. Maybe we actually should take our full break here. We've been playing for about yeah. two and a half hours. Great. Um, okay. Uh, uh, and we will come back and jump right in. Hell yeah, gang.